Hey guys, it's Miss Casillas. We are going to look at domain and range with discrete relations today. So we're going to answer the question, how do I find domain and range of discrete relations? So remember, discrete data is disconnected data. So we can count or list the numbers. So that's all we're going to do for domain and range. Domain is the set of all of the x values. So to write the domain of a discrete function, we will just list all of the x values from least to greatest, and we'll separate those numbers by commas, and then put that set of numbers in a curly brackets to represent that's the set of the domain. Then range is the same thing, but it's the set of all y values. To write the range, we will just list all the y values from least to greatest, separated by commas, and we will put that set in curly brackets to represent that set of numbers. Um, and just a reminder, range is the same thing as our output, our y values. So f of x, g of x, any output in function notation like that will count for the range. So let's look at this first one. I want to list the domain and range of this table right here. So the domain is going to be all of my x values. And my x values here are negative two, one, zero, one, and two. That's already listed from least to greatest from me. So I just need to write a curly bracket and then do negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two for the domain. And then the range is all of the g of x or output values. So all of my range values are 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. If you notice, I have 1 listed twice and 4 listed twice. We don't have to list them twice in the range. Range just is the numbers that are in there from least to greatest. So the smallest one is 0, and then 1, and then 4. All right, let's look at this next one. We have a mapping. The domain is going to be all of my x values from least to greatest, which is just one, two, and three. And then the range is all of my output or f of x values. And if you look at the table here, they're listed least to greatest from us. I'm sorry, the mapping. Seven, eight, nine, and 10 are the range values. Okay, number three, I have a graph. The domain is going to be all of the x values from the ordered pairs on the graph, and the range will be all of the y values from the ordered pairs on the graph. Let's start with the domain. So domain is my x values. I like to use the x-axis as kind of a number line here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on the x-axis what the x values of the points are. So if you notice, I just went through and marked on the x-axis where the points lie. Oh, and I missed one. There's another one at 3. So now I can just list out the x values here. So the first x value is negative 5, and then I have negative 3, negative 1, 0, and then 2, 3, and 4. So I just listed out the x values for those points. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the range, but it'll be on the y-axis. So my range values are negative 3, negative 1, I have two points on 0, I have a point on one, a point on three, and a point on four, so that's what I'll list out for my range. Negative three, negative one, zero, one, three, and four. Okay, number four, I have a set of ordered pairs. Remember, ordered pairs are x and y. So for domain, I will list out the x values. 1, negative 1, 3, and negative 3. So if I'm going from least to greatest, that would be negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. And then for the range, I will list out the y values, which it looks like the y values are 2 and 4. 
All right, number five, domain is the X values and range is the Y values. So let's find the X and Y values for the points on this graph. So this point right here has an X value of negative eight. That one is negative four. That one zero, four, and eight. So negative eight, negative four, zero, four, and eight are the X values of those points. So that makes my domain negative eight, negative four, zero, four, and eight. And then the range are the Y values and it looks like my Y values are two, four, six, eight, and 10. So Y values are two, four, six, eight, and 10. That means my range is two, four, six, eight, and 10. All right, number six says Riley is going to a pumpkin patch and is going to pick up one to three pumpkins. The function P of X equals 12 X plus 20 represents the total cost P of X that it costs based on the number of pumpkins X picked. Fill out the table for this situation to help determine the domain and range. So they told us what they want X, the domain and P of X, the range to represent. It says X is the number of pumpkins. So domain is X. So for X, I'm gonna use the number of pumpkins. And then P of X is the output. So that's the range. And they told us P of X represents the total cost. And to find the total cost, we can use this function 12 X plus 20. Okay, so the domain they actually told us, it said Riley is going to pick up between one and three pumpkins. So my domain is going to be one, two, or three pumpkins. And then to find the total cost of those pumpkins, I will use that function 12 of X, or 12 times X plus 20. So to find the cost of one pumpkin, I would do 12 times one plus 20, which is 24 plus, or sorry, 12 plus 20, which is 32. And then to find two pumpkins, I would do 12 times two plus 20, which is 24 plus 20, so 44. And then to find the cost of three pumpkins, we would do 12 times three plus 20, which is 36 plus 20, so 56. So the range is 32, 44, or $56 for the pumpkins.